Hello and welcome to today's video. Just a short one today as we look at two recent additions to my vintage Corgi collection. It's the 233 Heinkel Economy Bubble Car. So sit back, relax and let's take a look. Okay then, so we'll start off with this little advert here. So this advert is actually pulled from the pages of the Eagle comic and uh, it's the Eagle the 20th of January 1962. Now, doing a little bit of research, I think the actual bubble car was released in 1961, but very early in 62, uh, this advert appeared in the Eagle, and you've got the uh, Heinkel bubble car advertised there, uh, with Glidomatic spring suspension, seats, steering wheel windows, and all the external details of the original, length two and three quarter inches and it was three shillings but also released and definitely of interest to me were the chipperfield circus mobile booking office which i have got and then gift set number 12 at chipperfield's one which once again had the the crane truck and animals um in that one there that was like a, a two-piece set so quite a nice little advert that for a two series that i do actually collect now amazingly in the space of about a fortnight, I was able to get two bubble cars and um, they do come in various colours and um, it would be nice to get one of each boxed if I could, although I'm not quite holding my breath to get them all. But um, I got an orange one and a red one. So the orange, I think, is probably the most common and the red, perhaps the next most, but there's like a lilac one and then there's a a metallic blue one they come in many different colors there's a different sort of um, hubcaps on them as well so uh, there are variations and there's different colored interiors so there's quite a few like variations to go down if you really really want to specialize um, i have been on actually the uh, the facebook groups uh, for corgi toys and uh, there was one chap on there and uh, i'll pop the photos on now along with his name if i can find it and um he did a i think he's got 12 different bubble cars so it appears as if all the cars themselves the orange being the earliest release and the like there's a metallic -y blue one is the very tail end releases all of them have a couple of versions where there's like a, a lighter and a darker version of each like orange and then the red and then the lilac you know So I, I'm not looking for absolute perfection on these. I mean, I'm really not. I'm just happy to uh, to have like one of each color, really. I used to collect these. I used to have loads of them, um, I have about six or seven. Um, not quite all the colors. Some of them I had in doubles. Um, I have seen people, because this particular model just has the one rivet, they're quite prone to being customized. So I have seen people drill that rivet out. It's only about three or four pieces strip the paint off repaint it in a completely different color and then pop it all back together and i've seen some really really nice examples once again i'll pop a couple of pictures of those um in the video now because i think they're worth having a look but if we have a look at the uh, the box first and so it is really really tight it's not much bigger than a matchbox i mean it really is it's the probably the smallest car that corgi did pretty sure it is and uh, yeah, got the, the 233 number. As we speak today, this has not been re-released by the Modern Corgi Model Club. And I think if they did, they need to tie it in with the Mini just so you got your value for money, you know? Or maybe released two colours at the same time. But spring suspension seats and a steering wheel. And you can sort of... You can feel the uh, suspension. Now, these are the different hubs on it. So that's the... You get to see both types, spring and spun. So I think these are the spring ones, and those are the spun ones. So that's the other variation. And these have both got what they call the lemon seats interior, but there are, once again, different variations of those should you want them. 
my uh my wife's dad actually had a couple of bubble cars he had one heinkel one and one um a different brand i forget what it was once again i try and get some pictures of those they were uh his original ones from the 60s which he kept all those years and uh they've been sold on to other collectors now because neither of them were actually working but uh <laughs> they were incredible to see actually in the flesh you know uh, and they're much bigger than you might think uh, i thought they were bigger than than i was expecting anyway so um now that we've had a good look at these um, i'm just going to give them the once over because they're new acquisitions to me and i'm going to put them in my display case i'm just gliding this very soft toothbrush over to take off any bits of dust that might be there and then I'm going to run over them with a, a cloth as well but it's one of the because it's one of the smaller ones it's also one of the slightly cheaper ones to collect um, I've seen I've seen some stupid prices on these you know um, like 150 even 180 pounds for the uh, the metallic -y blue one I think that's a bit rich um, I'm just going to pop a little bit of polish on here I think that's a little bit rich. Um, I think 75 to 100 seems to be about the going rate for these now, if they're in actually tip-top condition. I think the orange one here, you shouldn't really pay more than about 74. Um, and I've seen them much cheaper than that, depending on the condition. Um, but certainly the metallic blue is the toughest. And which is weird because that's also the last one that seemed to have been released. So all this is doing is just taking off any sort of fingerprints. My red one here is not quite as nice condition as the orange, but it's it's just about good enough for me. You know, it's unrestored. I don't mind a little bit of play work. It's just a really, really cute, uh, cute car, a bubble car. And uh, I think those are going to look rather spiffing. Once I've got them in my uh, display case near the uh, near my chipper fields, which I shall uh, show you these in situ in a moment, because I think there's a couple of really, really nice, very, very basic, the most basic car of all, um, you could say, but uh, just gorgeous. There's something about them. I don't know what it is. There's something about bubble cars that always attracts me. So if I can get a few more, that was the box around the other way. If I can get the other colors, I'm going to try, and I might, if they're not too expensive, I might get some that have been repainted in some of the the colours that were never released. I particularly like, like a soft, sort of an avocado green one would be quite nice. Um, and I have seen one which is in black and silver, almost like um, the Guinness colours, in fact, um, or black and black and yellow, which would be, uh, which would be quite a nice paint scheme. So I'm going to have a little look and uh, watch this space and watch my future die cast videos because i will as i get new editions i will film dedicated videos on them so there you go hope you like that little short look at a couple of vintage corgi 233 bubble cars i absolutely love them they're they're fantastic and uh, i do think they look really really great when they're in display on the cabinet there they just look superb and uh, definitely hope to get the extra ones in good time and here we are you get to see the two Gorgeous bubble cars in situ in the cabinet next to my uh, Chipperfields collection, such as it is. If you've enjoyed today's video, do please hit that subscribe button for regular vintage diecast content. And I'll look forward to seeing you again very soon. Bye.